at Rainbow Lake. Um, it's now June, middle of June. I think it's about the 15th or 16th today. I'm in swim 17. I've come down with Richard. He's fishing 18. Um, it's now Saturday morning, early doors. We were lucky uh, we were allowed to come in the swim last night just to get the bivvies up and uh, just have a night's kip there, which was good. We know we weren't expecting that, but it, that, that makes a massive difference now because this morning I haven't got to worry about putting my bivvy up, getting all my stuff in the swim. All I've got to worry about now is getting to the supermarket, getting a few supplies, getting back down in here, getting my rods out, and then I shall not be moving out of this swim for one whole week. It's going to be weeks fishing on my own. Obviously, if I do need a hand, Richard is up there and vice versa if he needs a hand. But the plan is to literally do everything on my own. I'm going to be doing most of the pictures of the fish on my own. Um, get anything big though, definitely get some help around. But that is the plan at the moment. It's one of these swims at Rainbow where you do fish on your own. But it, is, it is a good swim. The guy in here last week, I think he had about 10 fish. So that's not bad, I would take that. But at the moment, I'm just going to show you out there, just to show you around. And then when I've got all my gear set up properly, I'll run through everything. And hopefully we'll have a good trip and uh, be plenty of action to show you. Until then, let me just have a little show around the lake for you. So in this swim, you've got basically margin to go at all on the other margin um, not going too tight you know because I don't want to you know if, if, there's a lot of woodwork over there I've been told by people who fish it before that you don't have to go right in all the time and obviously if you don't and you get a bite you've got a, you know a pretty good success rate you'll get them in hopefully so once I do find the areas I'm going to fish I'll show you show you them all but at the moment it is such a lovely sunrise, not a breath of wind on the water in my swim, but look, I'll, I'll zoom in over there. That, that tree over there in the water is the one they call the Brazilian tree. Um, I can fish my side of it, the left side of it as we're looking, and 16 can fish the other side of it. So this little area I'm going to have a look at. Uh, and then as you come along, I think the guy before has left a couple of little markers in the water there. So. There's one over there, which I think he was fishing just back off of that, about 10 foot or so. And then there's a couple of other little spots over here, which I'm going to investigate. I zoom in over here. I think that was an area where he had a, had, is a successful rod was over there. So I'm going to have a little look at that. But as I say, it's a swim that should be fairly straightforward fishing. Shouldn't take long to get the rods out. But at the moment, I'm gagging to get them out, but there's things I've got to get done first. But if I get everything done now, then I haven't got a muck around later, I can just sit down and concentrate and fish. Okay, just going to come and have a little wander down now to see Richard. He's the man who's going to take us down to the supermarket. He's the man who brought us down here. And he's also the guy who I'm lucky enough to be fishing with to get in this swim because it's a swim that I never thought I'd get a chance to ever go at so I'm over the moon. If I can pull out a couple of good fish, I'll be done. You know, job done for me. But yes, yeah, appreciate Richard's offer and also Clayton as well. I'll tell you about that a bit later because it's a bit of a change of plan because Clayton was due to come with me but I'll talk to you about that later. But at the moment I'm gonna head up to 18. And then, uh, mozzies are terrible. Bloody things everywhere. Uh, yeah, head up, see him. Oh yeah, also I'll tell you about the journey down as well later, but yeah, till now, till then, or now or then, here's Richard. And there he is, the man himself. Into swim 18, swim 18 to comfortable swim. It's a lot comfortable than 17 because everything's flat and level and you've got a luggy gear miles but yeah Richard what do you think then? Yeah it's looking good, the weather's good, fish have sent a few fish boshing so hopefully uh, we're going to have a good trip. Yeah it was handy to get in here a bit earlier weren't it so it gives a little head start. Yeah it's now it's 8 o'clock in the morning and uh, 
yeah. we've got the tents up and just waiting for the boats to be cleaned out and we're, uh, we're ready to go. Yeah, so it's only eight o'clock now on a Saturday, but we're, we're well ahead because normally you're not getting on here till probably 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at the earliest. But look, the bivvies are up now. All we've got to do is wait for the Pascal's uh, guy to come around and clean all the boats out because he likes to do that. That's one thing he really does like to do. He's make sure everything's spotless for you before you start. So we'll wait for that to happen. And while we're waiting for that, we'll go to the supermarket, get everything sorted out, come back, and then I'm going to get my rods out. Richard will get his rods out, and then hopefully the camera will be out a few times as well. But I am absolutely buzzing for this one. I know Richard as well. He did say earlier, I hope we bought enough bait, but hopefully we have. Well, hopefully we haven't, to be fair. That would be even better. Okay, Saturday, two o'clock. Just finished getting my fourth rod out. Um, fishing three long to the other side, one close in. Anyway, one of my rods already went and it was a bream, so not the uh, not what I wanted, but I'll put it back out again. Hopefully they'll bugger off soon and there's a the old carpet move in. But Richard's out there now sorting out his rods. I think he's done one or two and he's just got another one, I think, to do. Um, yeah, so it's been very quiet. Everyone's now busy beavering away, putting all their rods out and about. I'll just pan round and give you a quick shot to swim anyway. You know, I've got to eat something in a minute though, I'm starving. Have a bit of grub and then sit down and have a chat. That's it, that's Richard. Now wind keeps picking up, howling through and then dying off to nothing. Which is not good when you're out on a boat. I think we're supposed to be quite nice next week. There's going to be a little change in there. Which is the fishing the last week, that's what you always think when you're an angler. Everything is a positive. Right, it's uh, Saturday, probably about five o'clock now. Rods have been out now for a couple of hours. I've had a little bit of something to eat. Feel a bit better now. Uh, sun's out now. What can you say? Look at it. Glorious, absolutely fantastic weather. Bit of a breeze blowing. No fish showing. But it's still early, you know. Everyone's out and about in the boats. Making a bit of noise, clonking about. The fish know what's going on. They know it's Saturday. They know that people are setting up. They know there's bait going in left, right, and centre. But we're here. Just going to give it, a, you know, give it tonight. Give it another day, but maybe on the spot. Someone. I'm only here for a week, so I've got to try and make it start paying off fairly early. But this swim here can do some real good fish. I mean, all the swims can, but this one here is renowned for 60 pounders fairly regular and if I can get one of them for me the trip will be done totally and utterly done uh, off what my, my target for this trip is to get anything over 55 I'll be over the moon with that 60 pound will be will be like a dream come true 70 pound well I can't even explain that one but at the moment it's going to be a lonely one but I'm up for it I'm well up for it I'm just going to show you where I've got my rods, I'll try and explain it. I'm going to spin the camera around and have a look. Right, I don't know whether you can see that properly. Um, the sun might be a bit too bright, but I might do it again a bit later in the evening, but we'll have a go. See as I've got nothing to do at the moment. Right, well, these three rods here are all fished straight out across. They're all going straight across. Now one, it's heading into a little, there's a little orange marker in the distance there. Let's see if we can pick it up. That is it, right, that is the line of the left hand rod. I'm fishing back off that, a good rod length off of that marker back this way. That there is in about nine foot of water, eight to nine foot. That there, I'm hoping, is gonna do me a few fish. Next rod around is the middle one of these three. 
that rod there, if I zoom in on that one, it's being fished off the tip of this tree here. It's that one. Just underneath it to the left. It's in real deep, 30 foot, 30 foot of water. So there's one in eight, nine foot, the other one in 30 foot. That's got loaded with boily all around it. <laughs> Haven't gone mega mad with a boily, but I'll put a, what I think's a fair old bit in to start me off. Then we move around to the right rod, which is this one here. That again is, if I can zoom in, there's a tree blazing. A bit of tape on there. That one there. I'm under the tip of that, slightly to the right of it, under the tip. That's in 25 feet of water. For me, I'm, I want to fish off the edge of all these stands because if I get a bite, it's easy fishing. I'll just pick the rod up, walk back gently, pull it back another, about two rod lengths, and then I'm, I'm safe. Nothing can go wrong, only the hook can come out, but hopefully that won't happen. But yeah, that is it, that is them three rods. I have put the fourth one out, but at the moment the fourth rod is just being fished just out a little way, nothing, just, just gone into, off of this, as this drops away into the deep bit off of here, I've just slightly come up mark the marginal shelf my side, put a bit of bait on, and I'm going to leave that one alone for a while, see what happens. Uh, if needs be, I can push it over the other side as well. There's a spot that the Brazilian tree is over there. I've been putting a bit of bait around that. I just trickled a bit on the back of it, just to maybe get on that a bit later. But as it goes at the moment, that is where I position the rods. That could all change, seeing what's going on, and maybe adjusting accordingly. Richard now got all these rods out. Hopefully if he gets any fish, he's gonna do a bit of video on his phone for us, so hopefully I can add it all in to the video. But yeah, the bivvy's up. It's a real comfortable little setup here. It's actually, I think, to be honest, for all the swims I've fished at Rainbow, I'm, I think it's really good. Really comfortable, lovely little swim. But everything's just as you want it. Just enough room. But yeah, the idea anyway, just to explain this, is if a rod goes on it as quick as quick as can be, day or night, got to be on it, got to be on it. There's a lot of woodwork out there. I need to be on it. Pick the rod up, whatever one it is, all of them, back, walk back, 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 all the way into this little cut out here. That's probably about, oh, I don't know, 15 yards back into here. So I'm gonna reverse all the way up into here. As you look back, that's where I'm coming with a rod. If I can get back to at least here, and maybe another go, I think I'm home and dry. I'm hoping to land all the fish from the bank. The boat's there if I need it. Uh, also here now we have to, Pascal and Max have told us, but we must use all the rainbow nets, all the rainbow waist slings and retainers, and that's what we're gonna be using. So it's all their equipment now, that's what they want. So that's, we're more than happy to do that. You know, that is just another little added feature of protecting the carp you've got so everyone's now going to be adhering to that but it's all good equipment it's not a it's not like using any old rubbish it's all the proper stuff so all good as you can see some ducks coming into the swim but yeah I'll keep you posted hopefully I'm going to get a few fish uh, I'm going to set up self video self takes a lot because I'm on my own this time but there we go Well, not long had I uh, just finished that little bit of filming there and one of my rods goes. And you know what? Another bloody bream. It's two bream now. I think my rods have only been out since about two o'clock. I've had two bream. So, uh, well, if it keeps happening, we'll have to have a little rethink. Uh, pardon me. Um, stick with a boilie. Maybe 
I was putting out a little bit of tickle, but... <coughs> oh, excuse me. I might stop doing that if that's going to keep happening. But we'll let him have a little bit of feed. It might bring the old carp in. You never know when the carp arrive. The uh, brain might do one anyway. But it's two little bites, two little occurrences. So that's six times I've been out now. But um, Richard actually is still having a little play around over there. Just want to find a spot. But until until uh, got something else worth filming, I'm going to leave it at that for now. But look at it, it's, uh, it's lovely out there. Isn't it? It's lovely. Look at the sun on me. Look. That's the one. This is Richard and a little row around out there. Takes his time, old Rich. He don't, you know, he likes to do it all properly. That's good. So who would it be, me or Richard, to get the first blood? We shall see. But you know what? I've got. I think I've only got another six, seven nights left. Oh dear! Can't believe it. I'm well. I'm well pissed off about that. Okay, well it's Saturday night now. Um, about ten o'clock. Just about getting dark. The fish now out in front of my swim all from around from about the Brazilian tree all the way around to the left a few in front of 18 in front of Richard they're, they're definitely fish crashing around over there seen them boshing seen them come clean out of the water tight over and halfway across there's fish that, that are about so I'm going to bed tonight fully expecting to be up to the sound of a rod going off at some point tonight and uh, that is um, how confident I am I just feel it feel it's going to happen but you know still first day, first night I'm well pleased, got plenty of time left and uh, as it stands at the minute can you see me? yeah you can see me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. As it stands at the moment, I've had two bream and not one carp. So I'm hoping to settle that by another hour, I suppose I'll be pleased. But yeah, Richard's tucked up in bed because he seems to think it's going to happen early doors. I reckon it's going to happen in the night. But between the pair of us, hopefully we can have a fish each tonight. Till then, adios. Okay, right, first fish of the trip. It's now Sunday morning, about six o'clock in the morning. I've just had this fish here, so it's the first one, so it's got to be seen. Hopefully it will behave itself. No, no, no. Okay, so first fish, I'm gonna get him up. One side, and that's it. There we go. That's about it then. First fish of the trip. Well pleased with that. Yeah, lovely. Cracking fish. 32 pound by the way. She's going back in. Well done, fishy. Well, well pleased with that one. First fish of the trip. Always pleased to get off the mark. Uh, I've just managed to get the rod back out as well. I wasn't sure whether to put it out or not. Um, I did I say to Richard what did he think? He said no, get it back out there. So I've gone for it. I've I've slucked back out there. It's nice and flat and calm. I don't think I made much disturbance. You know what? Sometimes it probably don't even matter anyway. If they're having it, they're having it. But anyway, I'm, I've got all the rods back in play. One rod's fresh, and it's still really early in the morning. I'll just give a little view of the lake now. Show you what's going on. Lovely and flat. A lot of fish rolling last night, so I think there's a hell of a lot of fish in our swim. Um, so hopefully it's a sign of things to come. But for now, I'm going to have a cup of tea, have a bit of brekkie, sit back and watch the water. Uh, the good thing about that fish I just had actually was that it was down in the 25, 20, 25, 27 foot area. Uh, so it came straight out, no problem at all. 
and it was a pleasure to be able to play one from the bank for a change. Uh, hopefully there'll be many more. Right, it's mid-morning um, on the Sunday. I had that one this morning which I was pleased with and then about an hour ago one of my other rods gone. I thought here we go, fish number two for me, but no. Alas, another bream. So there's three bream now. I get a bit of a pain because every time you get one of them, you're having to go back out, sort your rod on the spot, chuck a load more bait in. So these bream are mopping up your boilies that are costing you a few kilo every time. But anyway, I'm sure I'll have enough bait. I did bring a fair bit with me. Uh, I have got a bit of pellet with me as well, but the trouble is if I throw that in, I've tried to shy away from that because the bream are bad at the moment, let alone with a bit of pellet in. So uh, at the moment I'm going to st stay as I am. Early days, uh, what I was going to say was, I was going to tell you, we're on the way down here, we had a nightmare with a van. Richard's got to go out tomorrow now to try and get the van fixed because it was about 150 miles away, all of a sudden... The van light, warning light comes on to stop. By the time we stop and have a look, the van's overheating, losing water. So we managed to keep filling it up. Every 20 miles, stop, fill it up, stop, fill it up, stop. And we managed to get here anyway. So Richard's got to zip into town tomorrow, drop the van off, get that fixed. Also, I'm here in Swim 17. Originally, I was going to come with Clayton and we was going to share this swim. And Richard was going to be in 18 because these swims being where you have to fish on your own, if we had a me or Clayton or a third person, that meant that we could really help each other out between 17 and 18 and do photographs, help cook dinners and generally just make it a little bit more sociable. But anyway, on the run up to that, Clayton got offered a trip to go and fish on the island, which he took up for two weeks. Uh, so that meant that when Clayton was leaving, I was arriving. But anyway, tr Clayton decided to go on that for the two weeker which was a very good move on his behalf because he did manage to bag himself a PB so I want to say well done Clay for that he had a 72 pounder and he also backed it up with a 67 pounder so he had a cracking brace he was well chuffed with that and uh, I think to be fair his, uh, his swapping of swims has paid off for him so now here I am on my own trying to amuse myself uh, and hopefully I can catch me 72 pounder. But no, uh, anything will do me for now. 55 is what I set myself, so anyway, I want a 55. But at the moment, I'm just going to keep rabbiting away because I've got nothing better to do. And then uh, I'm going to show you around the swim a bit more. I'll probably get out in the boat uh, maybe one day when the, when the wind dies down and I can go out and show a few bit of video in on the spots, a bit of echo or something like that. Until then, I'll probably just keep popping up on here talking a load of old rubbish. But it's rainbow for you, and you have to do the waiting game. Well, here we are. Sunday. Uh, 11 o'clock fish number two believe it or not believe it or not another absolutely stunning 32 pound common look at that 32 pound beautiful so long this one that is a cracker I'm going to hang about I'm going to get you back get the rod back out but I'm well happy to Two fish, mate, on the first day. Thanks very much, Rainbow. Okay, it's about midday on the Sunday. Uh, just had the second fish. Um, that rattled off, just on the phone. Getting the old Happy Father's Day from me, from me boy. And just as he was saying that, all of a sudden the rod screamed off. So, jumped out and got it. Another 32 pound common. Absolutely clonking great big long thing. Power it had. I could have swore it was going to be bigger than that when I got it in, but... I'm over the moon with that. Uh, I'm just going to put the rod back on the spot and while I go out I might show a little bit of footage just of where the spot is. Not sure how it will come out but I'll give it a go. But I'm happy. And we've still got all the afternoon to come. 
be evening time. I'm going to probably do a couple of rods just for evening because last night loads of fish showed on it just come evening. And I just wonder with all my bait have been taken, there's a hell of a lot of small fish out there. And so I'm going to think about freshening it up just before the fish starts to show this evening and see whether that means they can home in on the bait if there's any left. That is the plan anyway, we'll give it a go, but at the moment I'm pleased. And just need Richard to get off the mark now. Uh, we'll see you in a bit. I'll tell you what, you can't beat this. Look at that. What else do you want on a Sunday afternoon? Look at that. Unbelievable day. So nice and warm. A lovely breeze. Sitting there with that lot in front here, thinking, oh my god, come on, come on the big ones. And you know it's only gonna get hotter. But happy Father's Day to everyone. And you know what my boy rang me earlier to say happy Father's Day. I told him I just caught a fish. As I said that, the rod went, and that was the number two fish, so that was a little luck, bit of luck from the boy on Father's Day. Okay, uh, final little rundown of today. It's still Sunday now, Sunday late evening, about 10 o'clock. Just about doing myself a bit of grub. All the rods have been redone, fresh bait on them. Hopefully the fish are starting to show. We've seen the odd one in the background. Look at that sunset. Unbelievable. That's what we come here for as well, you know, scenery like that. Amazing. But yeah, all the rods are back out. I'm cooking me dinner. Richard's uh, still waiting for his first bite. Hopefully it's going to happen tonight or in the morning. He's done all his rods as well. He, he's been, funny enough, he's been over the back today. Have a little look in his boat. And he said he saw some chunks. He said that they are sitting in the, uh, sitting in the woodwork over the back there. And he said he saw some big fish all just laying there in the sunshine. All safe as houses behind the old snags. So we, all we can do is feed in front of them. And hopefully they're going to just drop out, have a little feed, and we'll catch a few more. But until then, I'll, just, I'll keep looking around because I'm just looking for fish all the time. But, um, that is it. So I shall leave you Sunday night with the sunset and a quick shot of my dinner, which is there. I'll turn it around, hang on, we'll get that. Everyone always likes a little shot of your dinner. No, oh, ain't too good though, is it? Trust me, it's gonna taste nice. Just about, quite midnight. 47 pound. Mirror this time. Gonna go mad. I'm gonna get lift up oh, he wants to go for it doesn't he here we go here we go 47 pound cracking mirror well pleased with that one okay well Finally in bed now. The clock has literally just gone midnight, so that is officially the end of me, uh, me first sort of full day on here. And to be honest, I'm well chuffed because I've had three fish, more than I could have expected. Uh, the last one was the mirror, which was forty-seven pound. I was over the moon with that one, and I made a bit of a fatal error though. In uh, when I got the bite, I just got in my bivy, turned me lights on. The rod's gone, I'm out the door, playing the fish. Uh, by the time I sorted out, I look around, the door's wide open, lights on in the bivvy. The bivvy is now absolutely full of insects. 
So I'm going to be probably spending the next couple of hours trying to sort them lot out. But they are everywhere. Uh, nightmare. But it's that time of year they get everywhere. But anyway, I'm um, pleased as punch. End of first day. Full day anyway. And see what tomorrow brings. They're getting bigger. Monday morning now. Uh, early doors about 6 o'clock in the morning. Nothing else happened last night during the night. Very quiet. But a lot of fish moving out there. Not sure why. We didn't get any more bites. But I was still happy anyway. Because I did have one. Which you did see. Uh, it's time for a cup of tea. A little sit and wait. Because this time yesterday we did actually get a few bites. Uh, the guy out there in swim 16. Looks like he might have had one in the night. He's now redoing his rod. Which I'll just show you. Fellas out there just redoing his rod. So he's obviously had a bit of action. Which is calling on the CB, I bet an answer. Right, well my old fishing partner Richard looks like he might have just got himself a fish on. So let's see if we can get a bit of video from here, from the back of his swim. You can see him out in his boat. There he is. That ain't a bad start to the old uh, Monday morning, isn't it? Yeah, Richard, Richard there just had his first bite, first fish, got it in. Uh, he reckons it could be a 40. So we're going to wait and see what the scores on the doors are. But I'm well pleased because he's had one. So we both caught now. And then uh, next thing, I'm going to ask him to do a bit of videoing of it on his phone or something. And I can hopefully put it on here. But so far this morning, I've not had a touch. But... Um, Early time, early days. Fifty-four pound. There she goes. Now this is a rundown of what's happened today. I managed to lose one, couldn't believe it. Done me, hook pulled. Uh, new spot I found, went out, put quite a bit of bait on it. 15 minutes later the rod was away. Thought I was in, walking back, lovely jubbly. All of a sudden, hook pulled out. Oh, devastated. Uh, went out and checked my banker rod, which was one that's done me three bites about 10 minutes ago. And there was a load of debris around the hook. So. It hadn't done the bite, and I'm just thinking that might be the reason why. It could have happened as I lifted it, but I think it could have been like that because it really should have done the bite, uh, considering it done three the day before. So now we're talking uh, about five, six o'clock in the evening, and looking around, we've had a bit of showers today. Uh, Richard took the van to be fixed. Uh, he's got to pick that up. He's now got his rods back out, but there was a lot of fish moving over in the back, especially over Richard's side, so I reckon he's going to get amongst a few more. So as it stands today, Richard's had the 54 and I've lost one. I'm now just going to do myself a bit of tucker and then I'm going to sit back and relax and hopefully get another bite tonight. Till then, the camera is going away. Right, Monday evening at 7 o'clock and uh, here's one for the old ladies here, look. Like an Olympic fucking athlete, I mean. Oh, 
biting his rod back on spot off, he's just nailing a bream. So it's gone from a 54 pounder to a two pound bream. I think that's what he eats for dinner, bream. That's why he's uh, so skinny. Cool and rich, good down here. Okay, here we go, Tuesday morning, uh, 2.30 Tuesday morning, fish number four, 33 pound mirror this time, let's try and lift her up for the camera. Go. 33 pound mirror, beautiful. Get her back in, get the rod back out. Still can't go for that big one. Gotta get that 55. But I'm well pleased with this. Oh, lovely, thanks. Thanks one go again for one of your beautiful fish. Still Tuesday morning early doors, about five o'clock in the morning. So had another bite, another bite on the same rod that I've just uh, put back out. So this rod has now done five bites. And here it is, a little common. I ain't weighed it yet, but it's probably just about 30. I'll weigh it as I put it back and I'll let you know. There you go, look at that. That'll be a little common. As I say, probably 30 pounds, but I will weigh it. Uh, not too bad, get two bites within a couple of hours. So back she goes. Have another go. I'm gonna get a bigger one soon. Well, the action's hotting up in this swim on uh, Tuesday morning. I've had the two bites. That last one was 30 pound. I weighed it 30, 30 pound on the nose. Uh, Richard's just had a bite, but unfortunately he looked bald on that, so he's a bit gutted at the moment. But that's his second take on a different spot as well. So he's got two rods that are done bites. I've still got my banker rods, which has done me five bites and one other rod that's done me one bite but I think we're in for a good day today hopefully this camera's going to be out a lot for fish just going to show you around now because it's an absolutely glorious day I mean look at that out there fantastic sun is beaming for the first time in the morning like a mill pond out there just looking up towards 21 see the island swim over there and this is all the margin along 18, swinging round, panning all the way round to 17's water. This is where all the fish are held up, trying to coax them out of these into the open water. Get a bite. So we'll see how we go. Game is on. Come on, the big ones. Still playing the waiting game, Tuesday. Sun is coming out, glorious day today. I've actually had to put a bit of sun cream on because I think it's going to be a scorcher. This this swim here is such a comfortable swim to be fishing. I mean, to tell you a little bit about Swim 17, it's such an easy, comfortable swim. Everything about it, where you put your bivvy, where you put your rods, getting in and out of the boat, fishing, deep water, easy, get a bite, walk back, no problems whatsoever, land them from the bank, you can ask for much more and there's not many swims on Rainbow where you can do that, in fact there's probably literally two or three swims that you can do that from comfortably, 
but at the moment it's just looking so good for another bite. I just can't wait. Everything I'm doing, I'm just trying to do to the best I can do it. Every time I get a bite, the rig comes in, new hooks going on, sharpest hook I can do every time. Same baits are going on. All I'm using is a about a 20 mil boilie tipped with a little white pop up on top. You know, to be honest, that pop up's very small. It's not really doing anything. Only you know, maybe something if they can see down there, they might spot that and go for that first. That's my theory anyway. Um, what else can I tell you? Just the shade. Shading is brilliant. When the sun's coming up at the moment, I mean, Richard's sitting in 18, he's got the sun first thing in the morning, he's sitting there roasting already. This is comfortable, I can build up, for, wait for the sun for the afternoon. And in the meantime, have a nice couple of cold beers, have a nice bit of food. It's a bit lonely in this swim, that's the only thing I would say, because you're on your own. You're not really getting any visitors. Your mate can't really come up and help you from 18 because he's got to sit on his rods. Vice versa for me. But all the swims I've fished on Rainbow, I must say I'm really liking this one. I'd love to get back in here again, but as I say, it's a very sought after swim. It's not easy getting. That's why I'm so lucky to be here anyway. Uh, I'm hoping before the end of the trip, I'm going to get the fish I'm after. You know, already I'm pleased, I've had them five fish, so I can't complain, it's still only Tuesday, still plenty of time left, so I'm just hoping to get that one out sooner rather than later, because as the week wears on, you're always thinking, oh, when well, my chance is going to go, but uh, I'm hoping it's going to happen soon, so as soon as it does, this camera will be out, and I'll be getting some decent footage of it, until then, goodbye. I'll tell you, that is one hell of a nice day. Unbelievable day. Look at it. It's like being in the Bahamas. You know what I mean? If there was coconuts in them trees, I think we would be. But anyway, still no action. I thought we might do a few bites today, but it's uh, warm weather. But for me, it def definitely seems to be uh, anywhere from 11 o'clock at night through to 11 o'clock in the morning. So I've had two bites today, can't complain. Richard's out there doing a sorting out his rods now over in the swim 18. Uh, a bit later on, I'm just going to adjust this one rod down here. The one that's been out for about two and a half days now. Uh, I'm just going to go and have a look. I'm probably going to roll that one back into some real deep water, put a fair old bit of bait on it, and then that'll probably just sit there now. Uh, so, well, I have been getting my bites, it's been 27 foot. So I'm going to try and find something very similar uh, with a real hard bottom to it. Uh, the, where I'm getting my bites, it's rock solid. I mean, it shows up big time on the echo sounder as um, a real thick white band, which is what I'm going to try and look for more to the right of the swim. I'm going to drop that one back, pull it back, do that, see what happens. But I'm still feeling confident that we could nick a bite before the night is out. And then uh, start again tomorrow morning. But I'm more than happy with, with my other three rods positioned now. I, I feel that they all could do a bite now. I'm really pleased with them. So just waiting for see if it pay off. Uh, a bit later on, what I'm thinking I might do is just run through actually how I do set my rods up. You know, this is the way I do it and it works for me, but I'll just show you anyway. I'll do that a little bit later when it's not so hot. And uh, you know, so for some people they might think it's a good idea, others might think what the hell's he playing at, but uh, I'll show it anyway. Make what you want of it, but it works for me, and we'll go from there. And that's Richard, I don't think make him out just through the gap there, bobbing about out there, getting a nice suntan. But he's uh. There he is there, look, there you go. But yeah, he's just sorting out his rods now and then he'll leave them alone. So I'll say I've got one to do, which we'll do in a little while. And here he comes out from behind the woodwork. When he gets back, I'll ask him if he's seen anything over there, because the other day when he went across there, he said they were all right in the woodwork. I mean, you could never ever get to them, but they're sitting in there and it'd be nice to know that they are still in there, because then we know they may move out a bit later on and have a feed. 
if they're not there, they could have pushed out the swim. Because one thing today that we haven't seen, that we have been seeing, if that makes sense, is uh, fish jumping period periodically, that's a good word, uh, throughout the day, normally sort of right behind there, you see one bosh out, and then as you come round, right over the back there, you'll see them real tight in rolling. But you know, every now and again, but we haven't had that today, which I do find strange, since it's so warm. Uh, maybe they've uh, moved around a bit somewhere else, but I'll see later on because they normally start washing just on dark. So if they start washing at dark, I'm confident of more bites. Might take him some food round later. He looks like he could do with a bit. Pascal on the way to the shops. Yeah, I get the baguettes in the morning, I think. Had a bit of dinner. The rods are all back out, done, freshly baited. I feel so confident now that something's going to happen. All I'm after now is that bun, one decent fish, and I'm, my holiday is completed. I've already had a crack in time. You know, in any book we catch, catch five carp. You got to be happy. Some people come out here and smash it, but for me that's good. Uh, lucky mascots are out now. Courtesy of my son. So uh, they're on display now. See this one. So I'm hoping they're going to bring me some luck. But until then, I'm going to have a nice relaxing evening. Richard's got a bit of work to do because he just had a brain. But look at that sun. I don't think you see that. I mean, look at that. Must be near 30 degrees today. There it is. But this place is just amazing. The atmosphere, everything about the place. If you're ever lucky enough to come and fish here, Honestly, it just blow you away. The whole scenery of the whole place. I mean, look down here. That's looking towards swim, cross swim 19 towards the island and 21 in the background. This just looks incredible. It's been said many a time, but it is almost prehistoric, the Jurassic like. You can just imagine a big Velociraptor coming through the trees. It is one hell of a place. That's just looking across to the island again. Fishing on there this week's Alan Danau. I mean, you get some great anglers here. Almost feel not worthy enough to be here, but I'm lucky enough to be here. That's the main thing. Right, okay. Uh, I just thought I'd show people how I set my rods up when I'm fishing here. Now, this is just the way I do it. Uh, which, to be fair, is a is a, probably how a lot of people will do it, and I've borrowed ideas off other people and I've adapted things myself. So I'll run through what I do and explain to you why I do it, and then you can see for yourselves how it's done or how I do it. If you like any of the ideas, then you know they're something that people can use. But you know, I'm probably might be saying things that have already been done many times before. Anyway, I'll show you. Starting with the rod and the reel. 
basically the reel I'm using is one of the old Shimano big pit bait runners old work horses these go on and on and on big old bit of kit spools old plenty of line um, they've never let me down they're old as the hills but they do the job um, well, like all Shimano reels they're all really good um, on the spool braid so we have braid on here which is going to be 50 pound braid and on the 50 pound braid I then tie a nylon leader now I've got on here about a 70 pound nylon leader I'll put about 10 yards of that on and then onto the nylon leader I then tie me uh, unleaded now this is a Pete Vogel unleaded this is about I think this is about something like 50 or 60 pound now the reason I put the nylon on first is just because you're using braid these fish when they pull they go for it if I put a nylon 10 meter one on first all of a sudden there's a little bit of stretch there just to take a bit of shock out of it I know the rod does that as well but that also helps onto the nylon leader like I said is the peat vogel unleaded you can use any of the unleaded that are available yeah the way I attach the uh, braid to the nylon is just using an all bright knot which seems to do the job fine uh, then once I've got the nylon onto the onto the braid I'm then attaching the peat vogel unleaded by splicing the unleaded and then I tie a loop onto the nylon I loop to loop the braid um, sorry, the nylon with the unleaded, and again I'm putting about a rod length and a half of the unleaded on. Now this is what this is. That's nothing out of the norm, you know. That's pretty standard stuff. Then this is what I do. I then attach one of the MCF leg clips. I do a bit of a close up do, it, but I attach one of the MCF leg clips onto the line, I, and then. But I, the way I attach it is just to allow it to be passed in the one eye, across the body and out the other eye. That way it's adjustable, just up and down the line. Now if you put these stoppers on, they're just the little rubbers that come with it. I'll put one top and bottom. That then locks it onto the line. So now that's locked on. Now the reason I do that is a couple of reasons. Is now... These, these leg clips dump leads every time, not a problem. I then put a loop in the end, a big, fairly big loop. And now I have the ability now, if I want to, is to attach my rig directly on here and then slide the, the uh, leg clip down. And now I can then loop to loop a rig onto here and I can fish with a single lead straight up to a float. Another thing with the, uh, the way I put the MCF clip on by sliding it up and down the line. The other good advantage is that if you're only single lead fishing, if you imagine this now is down to your to your um your loop that you've tied. Now that's as far down, sorry, as it goes. Bloody mozzies. Um so that's now at the ma the maximum go. That then puts the rubbers on, like I just showed. That goes on there. Now that locks it onto the line, okay? The lead will still get dumped easily. Now your rig's now going on this loop here, loop to looping your rig onto there. Yeah, so you won't have the second leader, just the first leader. So I'll loop to loop my rig on. The other good advantage with this is if I want to alter the length of the rig I'm fishing, I can quite simply remove the tail rubbers, slide the slide it back up the line a bit. Put the uh, tail rubbers on. Now that is now locked on there. That's the loop. That's where the now you've got your lead is. Theoretically, I've now just lengthened my rig by 12 inches there. So you can really play around. So if you only want a single lead fish, pop up to the float, and you just want to go directly up, but you're not sure how long you need your rigs to do that, use this system here. And I think, it, honestly, I just brilliant idea even though I did think of it myself um, it just allows you to alter the length of your rigs you're fishing with so you can tie a short rig to start with play around with this and you can end up fishing a meter away half a meter away you get the drift but anyway that is my idea that uh, 
is just for a single lead setup. If I want a double lead setup, the idea being I now have another piece of a leader out of unleaded, which I tie a big loop on, and I follow that down, and then I attach another lead clip. Now this lead clip happens to be one of the quarter ones. Again, that's spliced onto the end. And that allows the other end to have the rig attached. And the way I do that is to splice it on this end and then loop to loop through the through the eye. I can show that through the eye. My rig. Now my rig's attached. Now now I've got the ability, if I add this piece on as well, to fish one lead by the rig. And now, because I've still got my MCF clip on, and now allows me if I want to double lead. So if I want to double lead, it's there. If I don't want to double lead, I don't have to use it. I can take it off and just have a single one, or I can just leave it on and not put a lead on it, and it's fine. Now that's the way I set up my end tackle. Rig-wise, nothing special, just a, a multi-rig that is easy to change. The hook forms a D, pull it down, just like that. A D runs on there. I just bait floss my baits on. Uh, this one's an old one, has been out there. I did have a little topper on it as well. But I loop to loop, loop to loop the rig on. Do that. Every time I have them in the fish, I'm changing hook. It's, it's, you might as well. I mean, this one, look, it's blunt. Let's have one, one go out there, one fish, blunt. So I change it. Now, the hook I'm using this time is actually one of the Fox uh, Wide Gate Beaked Size 2. I've now found these to be really, really good hook. They're not massive. Now here people use quite big hooks, you know, but this is a size two, but it doesn't even look like a size two, it's actually smaller, but it is so strong. Now I'm really liking these, you cannot flex that open. Now, for me, that's working every time, I can get a fish, change the hook, I put all my baits I pre-do on with uh, flossing on, onto swivel, so I have a load of swivels with my baits on, I can undo it, take the bait off, uh, I'll show you that now quickly. Undo it, loosen the thing. I can now get there in the end. I can undo that off of there, and then, and then there we go. It's off. Now I can take the bait off. Quite simply, slide a new bait on. Then we get round to the next part. If I want to, I can quite simply. Pull that off, take the hook off. So I've thread a new hook on, put the bait back on, and then put it back in and I'm back in play. Bit of foam around there, once I've created a D that I want, as it goes down, it's fine. That's basically the setup I'm using on my rods. Uh, rod wise itself, nothing special. This is just a century rod, three and a half pound test curve, 12 foot, it's more than adequate. Um, and that's basically what I'm doing. So I just thought I'd show that, you know, there's not a lot going on at the moment, so I thought it'd be worth having a little show around. So that is it, simple as that. Okay, now it's uh, now Wednesday morning, about 11 o'clock in the morning, half 10, something like that. Uh, not a good night for me, unfortunately, didn't have any fish. But um, Richard managed to pull in a 40 pounder from Swim 18 in the middle of the night. Uh, so that's another one for him so well done to Richard uh, for me I had a bit of a nightmare really because I thought to myself why has my rod not gone my banker rod goes every night it's one or two bites so it's nothing occurred so I thought well, I'm going to go out there and check it this morning so anyway I've gone out there and I've lifted it up and lo and behold I pulled in this bloody thing I'll just show you branch there, only a little thing, it was round my rig, fucking unbelievable, I couldn't believe it, so I've probably lost out on a couple of bites there, or at least one bite anyway, because that rod has gone every time in the morning, so really, what I should have done, which I didn't do, was go and lift that one last night, last knockings, and put it back down, I put a bait over it yesterday evening, I thought well I won't lift it, I was happy with it because I put that back out yesterday, after I had the second fish, and I thought, oh no, that'd be fine, my baits have been lasting well, no problem with them. 
Yeah, it's rock hard down there. I've not had any problem with debris like that before, so I'm just kicking myself really because I should have really checked that. But anyway, you live and learn. Just means now every evening now I'm going to be out there lifting that one up, putting it back down again, make sure there's a bit of foam and everything around the hook, uh, just to double check it really. Uh, so that's really probably cost me, but hey ho, that is the way it is. Um, I'm really pleased with my trip so far anyway. You know, I can't complain, I've caught a few. Just waiting still for that nice size one to do myself a PB. I'll be over the moon with that. Uh, we've still got the rest of the day to come. Uh, where my rods are positioned now is where they're going to stay till I go home. I'm not going to move them about. I had one that was up uh, a little bit further on shallower water. I've now dropped down into another 27 foot rock hard spot like I'm having on my banker rod although it's probably 40, 50 yards away. Theory being that if they're feeding at that depth, hopefully I can pick another one up at that depth a bit further around. But at the moment, all my action in my swim is, is literally on two rods. So I'll keep plugging away on them two, and then the other ones will just sit there and keep freshening them up every now and again and see what happens. We've still got three nights to go. And sometimes what tends to happen is that you do actually increase your bite rate as the week goes on because you tend to get a little bit better at what you're doing and more confident and you know how much bait you need to put in. One thing we are finding that if you're on shallow water, say, well, when I call shallow anything really, above sort of 25 feet, you do tend to get problems with a small fish coming in and eating what you're putting out there. So you're probably getting cleaned out pretty quick. So we just keep feeding it slowly. Uh, and hopefully, as I say, the fish will move in get a bit more confident any bait that was probably out there when we got here is hopefully all gone so the only spots we bait on hopefully are our spots but i'll keep you posted throughout the day and hopefully i can get um, some video of a few more fish that is the plan anyway until then i shall have a nice relaxing day in the sun Yeah, okay, no worries. Right, I'll ring you back, hang on, because Richard needs me. Alright, okay. All right, bye. Bye. Here we have Richard playing another one. This is his second bite of the day. He's starting to crack into them now. It's like a fishing cowboy, that man. That's a good sign, he's picking them off now. Get it in the old net. Could be the moment of truth here, or not. Oh, go on, get it in. And there it is. The old victory salute. Well done, Rich. This could be actually the July photo for the calendar, rainbow calendar here. I like his old short style, though. one leg up, one leg down. That's probably what's bringing him their luck. Well, that's pretty good. Richard's just had his second fish of the day there. He's got that in. Um, that's a common. I don't think it's very big he's shouted over, but um, 
he's going to weigh it and all the rest of it and hopefully he's going to do a little bit of video for it so I'll get it on here and we'll have a little look at it anyway uh, so he's here two bites today so his swim's definitely picking up so hopefully mine will too what more do you want? music going away on the radio lovely weather willing the one of these rods to go Sure, one's going to take off in a minute, and you know what? I think it's going to be this one here. I'm really confident on this one. Just fished out that way there. I'm hoping that's the one that's going to go. This is the rod that has been doing the action, as I showed you earlier. I'll show you again. Just out that way towards that tree there, just under the tip of that. Got another rod round this way that's in 27 foot, which is just off the tip of that tree there. Put well, say that it's probably actually 20 foot off of that. Uh, it's going to be uh, good, and if that one goes off, I reckon we sat out there a little while. Until then, I'm just going to keep basking in this sunshine. I've been on holidays before, not had this sort of weather. So even though the fishing's slowed up at the moment with this heat, I'm sure come evening, early mornings, we'll be back in the game again. I think the old fish have got the same idea as us, just lazing about. Hopefully it won't be long though, and we'll get another fish. That's my rod I've got ready to go later. That's going to go back out of my spot. And I'm finally put a big PVA bag. Uh, put the, the lead and everything in there, so it's only 6 ounce lead. Whole lot in the bag. Bait's in the corner there, if you can see it. Got a bit of foam on it. Uh, that's in there. A bit of crushed boily. A little bit of crushed pellet, and that's going on the deep spots. So that's it. Only has to be bream if I do that on the deep spots. I can't do that in the shallow though. If I do that in the shallow spots, then I'll just get hammered. But anyway, that's going to be ready to go back out. I'll swap that over with uh, that rod there that's uh, out at the moment. Bring that one in and take the other one out. Stick it straight down because it's done the 27 foot bit. I can just let the bag go straight to the bottom and have no worries then. This is how we roll around here. Cooling. Feel like a big carp. Looking around, lazing about, waiting for me to drop my video camera in the lake. There we go, wrong there. This is my carp song. I'll tell you, if, I don't know if you believe in omens, but earlier on I'm sitting there tying up to the hook baits and I dropped some swivel on the floor and I thought to myself, 
If I find that swivel, I'm going to catch a big fish. It dropped all amongst everything. And I thought, right, so I got up. I couldn't find it anywhere. This swivel's gone, vanished. I've looked and looked. I thought, I've got to find it now. I said that. Could not find it at all. Anyway, I gave up on it and thought, oh, oh well, no, don't worry about that. I never really said that. But as it stands at the moment, I'll just pick my rod up. This one, uh, I can't find it. Where's it gone? There. See the PVA bag there? I just picked that rod up and moved it because that's the one that's going on the spot later on. Because it was in the sun, I thought oh, I don't want it getting damaged or something. And I picked the rod up, walked across to put it there in the shade, looked down, and there was the old swivel sitting on the floor. So, whether you believe in omens or not, I said if I find that swivel, I'm going to catch a big one. I found that swivel. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, and just for the record, here is said swivel. Tiny little thing. Anyway, I've got it. I'm keeping it safe. Me lucky swivel. I'm going to tie a hook bait on that. And that's going to go out. But I found it. I'm well pleased. Because <laughs> I was cursing myself for saying that earlier. But anyway, I found it. So we're now back in the game as far as I'm concerned. Whew. Right, well, it's uh, now early days. Early days on a big fish Thursday in the morning. Oh, I feel knackered. Uh, didn't sleep that well last night. Um, but Wednesday was a bit of a write off for myself. Richard done all right with his fish he had. I was expecting to have a bit of action this morning, early hours. But what's happened now is the weather has totally changed. It is now overcast, wind is hacking, grey sky, rain. Uh, and I think it's going to be like that for the rest of the day. So it could be a day to make the fish stop laying about in the sunshine, head down and have a bit of a feed. So we could go one or two ways. Well, no sooner had I just done that piece of the camera about how it could be a good day for fish. You rock goes up. Not big, 23 pound, but you know what? It's still early, big fish first, you know, I've had a bite. There's two bites, I just said 16 went out for one. But I've just got one, 23 pound common. Quick hold up, show you. There you go. It's been a couple of days since I've had one. So I'm well pleased with that one. Little star, little taster. He's gonna go back, he's gonna tell his mates, especially his older brothers and his mummy and daddy, where the bait is. They're gonna go down there, have a little bit of tucker, and I'm going to have the big one on the bank. That's more theory. Anyway, well pleased. Well, that was a little bonus fish there then. Uh, like I said, uh, not long I've just done that bit and off it goes. Only a small one, 23 pound, but I hadn't had a fish for a little while, so I was over the moon with that one. And the weather now, I'm just total, total opposite weather to what we've had. So let's see what the day brings anyway. Uh, till then I shall just uh, have a nice cup of tea have a bit of breakfast and then one of them rods is going to rip off I know it is, I just know it is well I'm still hanging about big fish Thursday hoping for another bite uh, but at the moment it's really quiet um, not a lot else really I can say but other than you just got to sit it out and just wait and wait and wait you know, the bites have dried up and it's gone a lot slower than it was, which I've already mentioned. Richard's out there now, just sorted one of his rods out. He just had a, an occurrence on one of the rods. But it turned out to be nothing. Um, I'm watered and fed, relaxed, feeling confident still. That it's going to do at least one or two more bites before the end of the trip. Hopefully that one today, the one I'm after. Uh, thoroughly enjoying myself. The week's flown by, it just goes all too quick, you know. Sometimes when you're on the two week, as you sit here now, thinking, oh, got over another week to go. But I'm only on a week trip this time, but like I just said, it's been thoroughly enjoyable. First time I fished this swim, absolutely love this swim. Would love to get back back in here again. Um, 
but I will sit here and wait and wait and wait and uh, hopefully one of my rods is going to do me a good bite until then fingers crossed for me please and there is Richard over there somewhere having a little shifty, having a little look at the fish Every time he goes out there, he's seeing them all laying in the back there. He's really seen some right kippers in there and all. The old rainboy, rainbow cowboy, as he's now known. This is when you run a, he hope that one of his other rods don't go off, because that would be a good bit of film, watching him get back over there quick. I think this one could be the old June calendar shot. I don't think I can get there, but 21 is round this way. Uh, no, I can't quite see it. Oh, hang on. No. I think it's over that direction. Well, I'm just sitting here, there. The rod's all locked and loaded, ready to go. I think I've done all I can with them. I don't think there's anything else I can do. They're all ready to go. I must admit, these things here as well, which Richard does make, these butt bungees which you can get through Richard or Eric, those things there, they're just the best thing out there. And I'm not just saying it because I know Richard makes them, they are absolutely rock solid. Hold that rod well in place, so it's quick and simple to get off. And you've got your full confidence in them. But they're all on all the rods, as you can see. Locks over, fully adjustable. A must, I think. You know, I've used different types of things. It'd be nice if that rod goes, because I ain't gone yet. fish and also the battery's nearly flat so I've got to charge it up. Well, here we are, Big Fish Thursday, last knocking. Just had another one. Uh, not the big one, but it's 30, 35 pound, big long common. There we go, I'll hold it up. There it is. Slip that one back. I think the big one's eluded me for Thursday, but maybe one on Friday. Well pleased with that. Put her back.
Right, this is it now. This is the final, last day of the trip. Um, last chance saloon for me. Swim 16 just been out and landed one, sort of over towards my way, you no know, light like on the boundary area, so that's encouraging. So that's, they've got that one in. Um, Sounded like quite a good fish, we'll find out later on. I'm well pleased I had that bite last night. Uh, so I had two, two bites on Thursday, so I'm yet to have a bite on Friday. So hopefully, if I can keep going, I'm generally getting a bite a day. So I could be in for one more bite at least before the end of the trip. It could be the one that makes my trip totally and utterly the best trip I've had. Um, it just looks so nice out there now for a bite. Let me show you around. It's just so still, flat. It's just got bite written all over it. Be nice to go off there while I've got the camera out. But it just looks so nice. Me or Richard's got to get a bite in a minute. Well, here we go. The old rainbow cowboy's in. He's just literally got back from picking the van up. Put his rods out. Got back to the bank. One of them's gone. So let's hope this is a good one. Let's hope he gets it in. But he's uh, still in the right at the moment. It's going over. Of course, it's baking up. Burning, it's just standing there. Come on, Ricky. One way of getting a suntan, isn't it? Catching carp. She's holding down. This could be the one, Rich. Come on, yes, yes, yes. Come on, nice one. Well, we'll have a look at that then, get some film of that one. Well done, Ricky. Well, how's about that then? About one o'clock Saturday, Richard has just banked that one. Uh, he's going to get it back. You see, it looks over 40, so that's a good sign. Uh, get him to that, get a bit of video. But it just goes to show. And Ross, don't have to be out there long. Just got to be the fish you've got to be in the mood. If you're in the mood, they'll eat it, they'll take it. And you ain't got to do all this waiting around. But oh, I could do with one bite now, then final, final one round it off. Richard's managed to clonk one out. And it's still fairly early days. We've got the rest of the day and the night to go. So come on the big fish. Well, news just come back from uh, Swim 18, which has actually had a 41 pound common. I think he took a couple of pickies of it, so I'll get that on here. But yeah, that's well done to Richard. Friday bite. Uh, slow, slowly ticking away the numbers. I feel I've still got a bite in me here as well. And hopefully another one for Richard. Friday bite time. Uh, 
I've got one. Again, not a big one. Not even going to weigh it, you know, it's probably 20, 20, 21, 20 pounds, something like that. Put it lift up, put it back. Anyway, it's a Friday bite, keeps on the bite today, regime. Uh, still time for one more. Got to be a good one out there somewhere for me with my name on it. Till then, I'm happy with this one. It's another bite. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, no sooner had I just been out put that rod out that I, I just had that 20 pound of them. Come back, just putting it on the rest. Steps out, the boat starts tightening it all up and then the other rod started dropping back. Picked it up, hooked into it, felt it on there, started walking back, walking back, walking back. Just going to get in the second one and it, off, off, off. Couldn't believe it. Oh, man. Gutted. But, uh, wound it in, just hook pull. Simple hook pull. Uh... It was a rod I hadn't had a bite on all week either, so a bit gutted about that one because I just I put that out this morning where I saw a couple of good fish. They were laying there and I've got it, I put it on the spot. Bang, off it goes. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't, oh, I'm gutted. Anyway, it's back out there now, see what happens. Well, how's about this then? Uh, Richard's just had another bite, he's into it now. He's uh, managed to get it out in open water, so he's off out to get that one in. Uh, Five bites today now from me and Richard. Really, really picking up now. So last day, you know, we still could have another couple of fish yet. So just hope this one's a good one and Richard get that one in and then we'll uh, have a nice little bit of video action for finish the trip. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's really paying off now. He's just come into view now, look. There he is, doing battle once again. We've got a dew big one out between us. This could be the fish that makes the video. Come on, Richie, get it in. Yeah. Well, sounds to me, Richie Vance has got a good one on here. Come on. He's towing him all the way down here, it is. All the way down to me. Can't stop it. Come on, Ricky, get it in. Oh, it's giving him a right run around this one. Oh, he rents his 50 plus. Get it in, Rich, get it in. He's got it. Well done, Rich. Right, here we have a 46 pounder. Uh, Friday afternoon. Last probably fish of the trip, but it's been a good trip. Whee! Here we go, we'll get this baby back now. Here you have Richard with his 46. The sun's in the way, but I'll try and get a good shot. Silhouetted though, but you get the picture. 46 pound, brought him all the way down here, towed him all the full length, so we've done him here quickly, and we're just gonna head off back. Well done, Rich, nice one, mate. Well, there you go, how's about your luck then? Rich has just been up the top, <laughs> just to have a shower. He needed one desperate. He's come back, he's just put one rod out, he's got back to the bank, just ready to start doing the others, and that one's torn off, so <laughs> one rod. One fish after being in the water probably 10 minutes. And there we go, he's got himself a 46 pound mirror, lovely. So uh, it towed him down here, so, because he only had the one rod, let's crack on, mate. We took some pictures, everything's good. Head him back up to get all his rods out now. Unbelievable. Well, here we go, little, little bionic mirror. Friday evening. 29 pound, believe it or not, 29. Here we go, there you go. Six bites today, me and Rich. Happy days. Well, as I had that camera out earlier on today, saying it could be the last piece to the camera and everything, turns out I've had a really good day today. I don't know if you can see me, that might be better. Yeah, it turns out we had a really good day. Six bites between me and Richard. I've lost one, Richard lost one, we've had four in, so 
not bad going and we've still got the night to go. I still feel there's going to be another take in it, at least one for me or one for Richard, one of us at least, definitely. But a uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable time, I say it again, but it always is. Uh, still a chance, every minute that bait's in the water, there's still a chance of a good one. So that's what I've come here for, to try and beat that BB. Let's see if we can do it tonight. Oh yeah, and also, that last fish I had, Christ, you can believe what happened there. I stood there, all of a sudden I heard this crack. My line just snapped, crack, just gone. Looked out, the line's flying through the air. The rod had tip had hit the water and pinged back up. I couldn't believe it. I stood there thinking, what the hell is that? I've got in the boat quickly. I've got out there, all my line's floating on the water because it's all floating braid. I've got it, threaded it down the eyes, got it down to the spool, quick knot in it. Started winding, got a few turns on the reel, keep going, keep going, keep going, got out there, because see the fish still bobbing about out there, and only going to manage to land it, so that was a lucky fish to be fair, but I've cool, never seen a take like that. That just went from zero to full on in a, literally a millisecond. Unbelievable take. Uh, and I've go over crack and all. Anyway, happy ending to that one. Anyway, see if we can have an happy ending to the video. Lovely. This is really it now then, Saturday morning. Everything's nearly packed away. All that I've left out is three rods. Gonna give it another 20 minutes and then they're coming in. So it's proper scraping the barrel time. But we live in hope. You never know where this last se last second one could go, but we had a good day yesterday around the video off anyway, so I'm well pleased with that. And Richard's now packing away, most of the stuff's in the van, look the swim's, swim's all empty. There's not a lot left now. That'll all be getting ready in a few hours for the next people to uh, jump straight in and off they go. And Good luck to them guys, you know, hopefully they'll have a few out, a few good ones. Uh, it's eluded me this time. Well, I shall endeavour to come back and have another go. And one day, I'll catch that big one. But it's not over till the fat lady sings and we've got 20 minutes left with the rod time. Um, so this could be it. Bon voyage and all that. And uh, I hope to be back again sometime. So thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure to be here. It's been great fun making a video. And hopefully I can make a few more in the future. So this is it for me. Closing the gate on another trip to the spectacular lake that is Rainbow Lake. That is it, we are shutting the gate.